Hello! And welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today we are continuing on with the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking. This is part nine, and this is going to be about the proper moisture content of tobacco and how to properly store your tobacco to maintain that moisture content so it does not get dehydrated. Now when we talk about moisture content of tobacco, it's a little bit subjective. Some of it is just based on personal preference for people. But as a general rule, your tobacco should be moist enough that in, when you pinch it together, it sticks together a little bit but doesn't clump. Now that's kind of hard to explain to someone unless they've experienced it themselves. But I'll try to show you some examples of tobacco that's maybe a little dry, maybe a little wet, or maybe just about right, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So here's an example of a tobacco which, in my opinion, is just a tad too dry. And you, I don't know if you can really hear, but it makes a very papery sound when you rub it together. And as you can see, if I pinch, it falls apart very, very easily. You don't want it to clump, obviously, when you pinch it, but this is just a little bit on the dry side. Um, it's more the feel than anything else. You can just feel it as you rub it through your fingers. It's crackly and dry. There's almost no moisture left in this whatsoever. But, I mean, this would still burn. This isn't to the point of being just completely dehydrated, but this is something that I would probably use a few methods to uh, rehydrate, whether it be a humidifier button or putting in a bag with um, a moistened paper towel, things like that. So this can be brought back to life. It's not dead yet, I wouldn't say, but it's definitely on the dry end of the scale. Now here's an example of some tobacco which in my opinion is just about perfect. This is a little bit of Dunhill nightcap. and. Again, you probably can't hear that, but it doesn't have that papery, dry sound as you rub it together that the other tobacco I showed you had. And it sticks together, but it doesn't clump. So as you pinch it and let it fall, it still sort of wants to stick together, but it doesn't clump together. Um, you can feel the little bit of moisture in it, but this is just about perfect. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have any tobacco that's just way too dry or way too wet because I'm pretty careful about storing my tobacco. Um, maybe I should have just left something out to let it dry out completely, but I think you get a pretty good idea of what the proper consistency should be. So how do you maintain that consistency for the weeks or months that you might have a tin open? Well, let me relight here. Now most tobaccos you purchase will come in tins like this, or like this, or maybe like this. A lot of American blends come in tins like this. Or if you're buying a store blend from your local tobacconist, it might come in a baggie like this. Now when the, are, when the tobacco is in a tin, it is completely airtight, it's hermetically sealed. So the moisture, whatever the moisture content of the blend was when it was put in the tin, that's what it's going to be when it comes out of the tin in general, sometimes they can come a little, become a little gloopy with, you know, as it ages, fermentation, whatever. But for the most part, they're going to stay at the moisture content that they were packaged at when they're in the tin. But once you open the tin, the tobacco can start to dry out because these tins are not airtight once they've been opened. You'll notice when you first open a tin, you'll get that little sound as the air escapes. And then once that happens, these are no longer airtight. There's a little, little bit of a rubber ring there but it's not enough to really keep the tobacco completely fresh. So what I do when I have opened a tin, depending on how moist it is when it's opened, if it is just right, then I take it out of the tin and I'll put it in a jar like this. If it is a little moist, I'll leave it in the tin for a while and let it dry out a little bit until it gets to the consistency that I like. These tins, not these tins, these jars, you can find pretty much you know, most major grocery stores, Walmart, places like that. And this is a nice little glass jar that has this rubber gasket around the lid. Now again, this isn't, you know, completely hermetically sealed, but it keeps it airtight enough that your blend is gonna stay at a pretty good moisture content for up to several months. Um, for me, these jars are for the blends that I'm currently smoking. 
So I know this isn't for long-term storage. This is for a blend that I'm going to be smoking throughout, you know, a several month period. And usually, you know, like this was a tin of Elizabethan mixture I put in here, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I'll probably have finished this in another couple weeks. So it's not going to give it time to dry out too much. And this will keep the tobacco at a more constant state of moisture than if you were to keep it in a tin like this, where it can completely dry out. So these are my currently in rotation tobaccos are kept in jars like this. If I'm gonna do long-term storage, I use a jar like this. This is just a little Kerr canning jar, another one here. Um, this one has Dunhill nightcap in it. I got some nightcap in bulk, and this is just a little jar that I can cram about four ounces of tobacco in. And again, you can get these at most grocery stores. And the beauty of these is this beautiful rubber section on this insert on the lid and I cram these as full as I possibly can with tobacco just shove it down there this is for long-term storage I make sure there aren't any little bits of tobacco there actually is one right there I'm going to remove that if possible there we are nice and clean make sure the rim here is clean get a nice tight seal there and now that's about as airtight as you can possibly get. And for long-term storage, this is great if you've gotten a bulk blend. You know, if you wanna keep your tobaccos in unopened tins, that's perfectly fine. Those can last for years and it'll store fine in those. But once they're opened, I highly recommend using a t or jar like this, a nice glass canning jar. These are lifesavers, they're amazing. I have almost all my cellared blends are in jars like this if they are not in unopened tins. So now we know how to properly store the tobacco. You use your jars, canning jars, jars such as this to keep them nice and fresh. But what if you have a blend which is dried out too much? Let's say you went to your local brick and mortar store, you got a house blend, you smoked it a couple times and then you forgot about it. You left it in a baggie like this, which does not keep the tobacco very fresh, by the way. Well, it's dried out to heck. What can you do to revive it? Well, I mentioned this in the... Uh, sort of accessory part of my series on how to smoke pipe tobacco. This is a little humidifier button. And what you can do with this is you soak this in distilled water. You wanna use distilled water so it doesn't impart any sort of uh, uh, hard water or anything like that to the tobacco that you have. You soak this for about a half an hour. This takes on the moisture and then I can put it in a jar like this and it will revitalize the tobacco a little bit. This isn't for you know, just completely tinder dry paper consistency tobacco. This is for something that's just a little bit on the dry side that you want to moisten up a little bit. I'll throw it in a jar for a couple days is usually all it takes. And then you want to take this out. For one thing, it doesn't hold enough moisture to even make it worthwhile to keep it in there for longer. And also you don't want to completely constantly humidify pipe tobacco. It's not like cigars where you keep those in a humidifier under, a constant, under constant humidity. With pipe tobacco, if they're constantly, if pipe tobaccos are constantly humidified, they will mold eventually. So you just want to get it up to the proper moisture content and then remove this. Now, if your tobacco is really just papery, as dry as can possibly be, what you can also do is get a freezer bag like this. You can open this up. You can take the tobacco that you're trying to rehydrate. You put it in one end of the bag. So let's say you put it on this end of the bag. Then you can take a paper towel, just a normal paper towel. I double it up a few times. Moisten this, get it pretty wet. Put it in the bag, don't have it touching the tobacco. So put it in one end of the bag. And then you can seal this bag up and this moisture will be contained within the bag and it will rehydrate the tobacco. Alternatively, you could also use a Tupperware container like this. And again, you don't want the moist paper towel to be touching the tobacco, but you have your tobacco in one part, put your moist paper towel in the other. And this is for really, really revitalizing. And you know, a blend can be brought back to life moisture wise a couple times, but if you do it too often, if you let it dry out and then try to re-moisten, dry out and re-moisten, it can eventually just not be very good. So it's not something that you can do over and over and over again. But that's basically all there is to it. It's a fairly simple process. There have been blends that I've had that have just been 
completely unsmokable, so tinder dry that they would just poof up into flames, they would explode if I tried to light them, and I've managed to get them back to life by using either the freezer bag method or the ugh, Tupperware container method. So there you have it. That just about covers it for this edition of the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking. If you guys have any other questions or any other things you'd like me to cover in future editions of the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking, let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. Thank you so much for watching.